Great. Well, I'm ready to get started. We're going to be talking today about what we call the LinkedIn playbook here. And what we want to help you do through this material is unlock this opportunity that you have with uh, this incredibly fast growing network of business professionals and help you understand some of the misconceptions that people have around LinkedIn and how to use that to reach and engage their customers and potential customers. That's what we're going to be doing today. And here's how we're going to do it. We got a, we got a lot that we've prepared for you today. Number one, we want to help you understand why this opportunity is so important right now. And then we're going to move into sharing with you this four-pronged, four-piece social selling strategy with real-life examples of how each of these pieces work together. So this strategy is kind of the blueprint or the instruction manual, if you will. If you're sitting there wondering, how do I get LinkedIn to work for me? Or I've tried LinkedIn and it really hasn't done anything for me. What am I missing? Well, it's likely you're missing these four pieces and how they work together. So that's the second thing. Thirdly, we're going to be talking about some of the tools that you can use to accelerate your work on LinkedIn, your ability to use LinkedIn. So those are all brand new tools we want to share with you today and, and give you some insight into how you can accelerate what you're doing on LinkedIn with these tools. And then lastly, we always leave plenty of time for Q&A. We did a private version of this session last week. I think, McKinsey, we were on for an hour answering questions, okay? So as those questions come in, put them into the chat. We'll make sure we leave plenty of time um, to get those questions answered. Mackenzie, you want to add anything before we jump right in? Nope, that's really it. You got it. Just that, you know, the stuff that we're going to be teaching you today is stuff that you can actually go take and employ right after the session. So make sure that you're paying attention, make sure that you're ready and just good to go. Let's rock and roll. So let's talk about first and foremost here. If you're taking notes, some data I want to share with you here. Why is it important right now? Jackie, Mark, Dar, I see Michael over on LinkedIn. I see a lot of names here with us today. Why is it important that you invest your time and your team's time into LinkedIn right now? Why is that important? Well, it sounds cliche, but as we know, there have been fundamental, profound changes in the way the world operates and the way we communicate as people. And this change is so profound, whether I saw a lot of print friends here with us, I saw a lot of agencies. Um, I see marketing companies here. I see B2B organizations. I see nonprofits here. For all of us as companies and as people, anybody who has a message to communicate to an audience, the world has changed. And here's the change. And, and this is what kind of underlies the whole notion of Opti Channel. And I want you to understand this. So as we get into LinkedIn, you can see why it's so important. Here's the thesis. Producing content, creating content, creating communication correctly. And if you've tried producing content and it hasn't worked for you, it might be because you're not following some of these principles. But producing it correctly is the easiest way for anyone, any organization to reach their goal. Here's why I say that. You might be wondering, why am I saying that? And uh, how does that play into LinkedIn? It has to do with these two key concepts. Take notes on this because this is really important here. The first key concept is this idea of a content-saturated platform. What does that mean? Well, there are two kinds of platforms out there, two kinds of social platforms that you have an opportunity to engage in. The first are what we call content-saturated, which are platforms that have, if you look over here at the screen, they have more content than they do viewers. So more information, more viewable content than consumers of that content. So what are examples of that right now? Like Facebook is like that. Instagram is like that. Meaning the organic reach that you get on those platforms is not that high. Mac, you want to make a point on this? Yeah, typically. And this is if you, a symptom of this is if you've heard people say, well, the algorithm isn't working for me anymore. So if you've heard people say, you know what, shoot, the algorithm's changed and it's not working for me anymore. Really what that means is previously when they were on that platform, whatever that platform was, and they were posting content, there wasn't enough content, which Dave is going to talk about in a second. But at that point, there wasn't enough content. And thus the opportunity was that the content was shared with a lot of people. Well, as people start to catch on to those platforms and they start to be consuming that information and that happens, 
then what happens is, is that people, the, the, the algorithm, right? It's, it's that there's a difference between the amount of people and the amount of content. So if you hear people saying, shoot, you know what, on Instagram, the algorithms changed, my content isn't getting as much likes or engagement. That's why, right? Because the, the ratio has shifted between content and amount of viewers. Yeah. So it's a basic, like you say often, McKinsey, it's a basic supply and demand uh, concept here, right? So that's the first one. There are platforms that are content saturated. And then on the other hand, there are platforms that are content deficient. These are platforms that have more viewers, more users than there is content being made. These platforms are fewer, but they're really important to you. Why is that? It's because when you invest time in these platforms and you produce content in the right ways, the ability for you to reach thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people is, is there. So an example of that right now is LinkedIn. TikTok is another example. Clubhouse is another example. These are all channels that you have the potential to be able to put content into and without paying a dime reach a large number of people. So the content deficient platform that we're talking about today is LinkedIn. And as you think about McKinsey, this is to kind of illustrate your point about the, the um, algorithm, right? It's a very complex thing across all of these platforms and they all operate differently. But what I want you to take away from this and from this concept here is that specifically as we think about LinkedIn, think about how powerful what it is that I'm describing to you is. If I'm connected with um, Generosa, let's say, I just see Generosa just wrote a note there in the, in the chat. And if I'm connected with Generosa and Generosa likes my post on LinkedIn, it could be potentially viewed, potentially seen by all, let's say 5,000 of Generosa's contacts, connections, right? I don't know how many you have, Generosa. I'm just making that up. But let's imagine you did, right? Multiply that by the, the other people who start to engage with my posts. Let's say I get another 50 likes on that post and you can quickly see how you could get to a, you know, a quarter of a million views on a piece of content. That's how this works. And that's how the opportunity with these content deficient platforms presents itself. Yeah. Now you might all be thinking, okay, well, wait a minute. So even if I get in front of 250,000 people, I want them to be the right people, right? So we're not going to leave you hanging just a little bit later in this session. We're going to talk about how you can actually create a connection and get your posts viewed by the right people. So stay tuned for that. Cause I think it's important that you want to get in front of a lot of people. Quantity is important. But like anything, you want good quality leads. You want the prospects that are in your ideal customer profile or in your customer's ideal customer profile as well. So we are going to be sharing that as well. So if you're getting this concept, this is a very important concept. I want to see you drop an X in the chat, whether you're in Zoom, in Facebook, in LinkedIn, wherever you're hearing us right now, wherever you're seeing us, drop an X in the chat if you're getting this. Really important concept. Now, as it pertains to LinkedIn, I'm seeing the Xs pour in. That's good. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Derek, Martin, Lindsay. I see all of those X's coming in. Check this out on LinkedIn. Less than 1% of people on LinkedIn are creating content. So when you think about that, if you look back at this picture here, content deficient, the machine on LinkedIn is starving for content. It's like my four kids, right? They can never have enough food. Can I have a snack? Can I have a snack? That's all I hear with my kids, right? That's like LinkedIn right now, starving for content. So let me summarize what I'm saying here. Opti channel, this idea of opti channel is finding your market, or if you're servicing clients, we have a lot of service providers here, marketing companies, printers, et cetera. The idea of opti channel, tying this all together, is that you need to find your market where they're hanging out. Right now, LinkedIn is one of those places. And the idea is you reverse engineer from where that attention is contextualize communication and content to engage them in that spot and then orchestrate what we, call, what we call meaningful interactions and conversations. I'm going to show you how to do that today across that channel and the small number of other channels that matter and then do that at scale, do that repeatedly over and over because you'll be learning through that process what resonates and engages your audience. That's the opti-channel philosophy. Now, as it pertains to uh, LinkedIn, there are, like I said, less than 1% of people who are producing content. That's what this represents here. In other words, 
Less than 1% of people are in the producer's chair, if you will. The other 99% are like these folks here. Let's imagine they're just consuming the content, right? What I want you your to start children, to think about. consuming your food. <laughs> <laughs> give me more food. Give me snacks. Give me more of this, right? More of that. What I want you to think about is as you start to browse social, whether that be LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever channel you're on, start to put yourself at least in this chair by looking at that content through the eyes of a producer. What do I mean by that? If you see a piece of content that's doing well, instead of just passively consuming it, listen, this is really important. Instead of just passively consuming it, now as a producer, think about why is that working? Why is that getting attention? Why are people commenting? Why is my competitor getting a getting hundred comments on that piece of content and I don't get anything? Could it be that he or she knows something that I don't? That they're contextualizing the content in a way that I do not? Start to take note of things that way. It's a very, very powerful mind shift that helps you start to see how to take this opti-channel philosophy and put it into reality. Now, I want to know. I want you to drop one of these two numbers in the chat. Are you in the 99%? If you are, drop a 99. If you're in the 1%, drop a one. Which of those are you primarily in? Which of those do you usually find yourself in? Are you 99 or one? There we go. I see the 99s. That's okay. Be honest. Be honest. LinkedIn, I want to see you drop 99 or one. Facebook, same for you guys. I see somebody saying 99, but I'm trying to be in the 1%. Yeah. Good. I see David the, saying he's in the 1%. Good. Yeah. And the good news here is that we're only at 1% on the producer side. And that's why, as Dave mentioned, this is an optimal channel right now, because we're still at a point in time where you have a huge competitive advantage if you can learn these tactics and start to employ them, right? If we talk in yep. a year from now, if you start doing this in, in, in a year and a half or six months from now, you're going to miss the opportunity. And that's why it's really important that you start this today and you're in the right place to learn it. So great job. So let's... Let's look at the framework then, Mackenzie. I think with that backdrop, I think everybody has an understanding now of why this is so important. Hopefully, we've been able to give you a couple unlocks, as Mackenzie likes to say, or aha moments where you realize, yeah, you know what? I might be missing an opportunity for my organization. I might be missing an opportunity for my clients. Maybe I've tried this in the past and it hasn't worked. Maybe there's something I don't know about this that I need to learn. That's what we want to impress upon you. Now, let me show you what we call the social selling framework, all right? I'm going to bring it up here on the screen. Don't worry. If you want these slides, you want the recording, you want any of that, let us know. We'll, we'll make sure to get that to you. Drop the word slides in the chat, wherever you are right now, and we'll follow up with you on that if you want this information. I'm going to show you each piece of this at a high level first, and then we're going to go into the details, all right? Let's go. So, Mackenzie, you mentioned this at the start. When we first started this, before we started training folks on the OptiChannel philosophy and on LinkedIn, before we started working with thousands of organizations around the world, we, we started learning this ourselves, right? And at that time, there was no playbook. We didn't have the opportunity like the folks here today have, right? So everything that I'm sharing here with you, everything that Mackenzie and I are talking to you about today are the key things that we've learned, not only from our, from our own journey, but from working with numerous organizations around the world, all right? So here are the four things that you need to know about the social selling framework. The first, as it pertains to LinkedIn, is you need to establish your brand. What I mean by that is you need to recraft what we call your profile on LinkedIn. That's like your, your mini homepage on LinkedIn. I'll show you an example here. But you need to rewrite that, reposition that with your target market in mind. A lot of you, a lot of us, before we realize what we're doing, basically look at the LinkedIn profile like an online CV, an online resume, right? If that's the way you've been looking at it, this is potentially one of the areas where you're missing a significant opportunity. Instead of doing that, we'll show you how to recraft it with your target market in mind. That's the first piece here. The second piece of this, of this framework, if you look at the screen, is you need to fill those pipes with content. You need to fill the LinkedIn machine. You need to feed Dave's four hungry kids. You need to feed LinkedIn with content. And you need to publish what we call high value content. I'll show you what I mean by that. And you need to use hashtags correctly so that you can engage your target market. That's the second piece. Third piece, you need to connect. That means you need to build connections and you need to establish trust with the people, the kinds of people that you want to work with. And there's a very specific way that you can do that. I'm going to show you that. 
Um, I'm going to show you how to do it in a way where you're not pitching, where you're not being salesy. That's not what this is about. This is connecting with people so that they know, they like, and they trust you. And when you do all of these things together, that's a byproduct of this process. Fourthly, you need to engage. What that means is, it's called social media for a reason, right? McKinsey, I know you like when I say this. It's called social media for a reason so that you are social there. And you need to discover conversations within your target market. I'll show you how to do that using hashtags, using search, so that you can create value for your market and engage and attract that market to you. A lot of people, when they say LinkedIn doesn't work, aren't doing any of these things. They think, hey, if I put my online resume up on LinkedIn, all the leads should be coming into me, right? That's not how it works. Let me show you something. McKinsey, grab this URL. Grab this URL, right. put this in the chat. Here's how LinkedIn looks at you. And I want to know your grade here. Take this URL, McKenzie, Mike, Suzanne, all of the different people in the chats are going to drop this into the chat. Click that link and, and come back into chat and tell us what your social selling index score is. This is a score that's like a composite of how LinkedIn looks at you in these four areas that you see here on the screen, okay? And so it's kind of like a behind the scenes view of how you're perceived by LinkedIn relative to how well you are doing these things. So I wanna see your scores. I see 60, I see 64, I see 72, I see 73, I see 83, I see Paul has a 72. Over there on LinkedIn, let me know what your scores are. Alan says 67, Robert says 55. <laughs> RJ says 53, the shame bell rings. <laughs> Dar now, is now 72, up six from last week. Here's the thing, if you look a little bit closer, and Dave has it on the screen here, on the right-hand side of the screen, they give you a few different criteria in which they use to build this number, right? So things like establishing your professional band, finding the right people. The good news is, is that everything that we're teaching you today directly impacts those four, four areas. So our framework rolls up to support those four areas, which LinkedIn judges you on. And at the end of the day, it's not about the fact that LinkedIn is judging you. What it's about is that you have this huge opportunity to get in front of people. And, and to be honest, LinkedIn you are at their mercy because they're the ones who have the ability to share your content with the right people. And so what you want to do is you want to build your brand. You want to find the right people. You want to engage with insights and build relationships in a way that's going to move the needle on your social selling index. Because when you do that, your content is going to be shared with your audience. It's going to get more visible in the ecosystems of your prospects and customers. I see some questions coming in. We have Craig Hath, we have Jessica, we have Suzanne, we have, a, we have Mike Chircuzio, we have a bunch of people behind the scenes. They'll make sure to get to your question. And then we're also gonna take them on the air, folks. So keep those questions coming in. We love seeing that. And uh, our team will be answering those questions as they can. So let's start with the first piece of this framework here. If you can look at the red arrow, that's what I'm pointing to here on the screen. And that's your profile, all right? That's the first piece here that we're gonna be diving into. Now, we actually have a guide for you. We'll send it out to you after the session. If you want this guide, drop the word guide in the chat, wherever you are. This guide has 15 action steps. I'm going to cover a few of them right now, but 15 critical action steps that you need to take in order to reposition your profile to, to start to do the things that we're talking about here. So if you want the word, oh, I see the guides already dropping in there. Yeah. Drop the word guide in the chat. Kevin, I see you. Ian, Russell, Drop those in and we'll get those to you after the session. So for right now, though, just watch the screen. I'm going to give you a few of those insights that you need to know. The first thing that I want to establish here is, I get this question a lot. Why do I need to have a LinkedIn profile that's effectively set up in this manner? Why is that even important? And as I've mentioned to you already, the shift that you need to make mentally is that it's much more than a resume. It's actually your selling brand. And people are judging you based on your profile. 49% of buyers research a sales rep on LinkedIn. 50% of buyers avoid reps with incomplete profiles. And you might think, the heck's an incomplete profile? Am I one of those? Well, let me show you the screen here. Look at the screen. I'm going to grab my pen. I like grabbing my pen sometimes. Let's imagine this is profile. Can I draw? Yeah, I can draw. Profile A. Here's profile B. Which of these two, drop it in the chat, which of these two, if they reached out to you, would you be more likely to engage, A or B? 
Yeah, B, 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 B. Reminds me of a joke. I can't remember the joke right now, but I know that was the punchline, right? <laughs> no brainer. Yeah, that's the idea. Who looks more real? B. B. And so that's the idea here is that an incomplete profile gives an impression to your potential buyer that's not strong. 92% of B2B buyers will engage with you if you're viewed, if you're seen as a thought leader. Now, you can't just wake up one day and say, I'm a thought leader. There are very specific things you need to do. And one of those things is get your profile right. Now, the big mind, uh, mind shift that, that needs to happen here. Many people, when they write their profile, when they craft their profile, write it from this view. Me, 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 me. It's all about me, right? I'm so awesome. We're so awesome. Whereas what I humbly suggest that you think about doing is writing it this way. Here's how I help businesses or here's how I help people or situations like the one you're in right now. And here's what I can deliver for you. And yeah, of course, I'm awesome, right? Here are some accolades that we've received. But it's for you, Mr. Customer, that we do all of that. You see the difference? One is all about me, all about the cool things that I represent or that I've done or that I like to brag about versus recrafting it in a way where when your ideal customer, when your target market looks at your profile, they say, hey, this person is for me. This person is here to help me. Now, be honest. Which of these two do you think you are right now as it comes to your LinkedIn profile? Are you a one or a two? Drop that in the chat. If it's really mostly written about you, and that's okay. Most people start there. Drop a one. If you already have moved to two, or if you kind of were naturally inclined to that, drop a two. Let's see where you stand. Now, the other thing you need to make sure, as I said, people are judging us, right, by, by the way things look, is you need to get your headshot in there. You need a, a somewhat professional-looking headshot. I can't tell you how many times, uh, Mackenzie, you know this, we see some of our students come in with just the weirdest headshots, right? And they're like, nobody's replying to my DMs. Nobody's replying to my messages. I'm reaching out and I'm not getting anything, or they don't have a picture at all, right? When we talk about incomplete profiles, the headshot is a really important piece of that. Again, this is all on the guide. There's some things here on the screen. We'll make sure that you get this if you want to fine tune your headshot. Behind your headshot, there's another important thing, which we call the cover image. See that here? Hopefully you can see that there on the screen. So a lot of people, if you look at their, um, their LinkedIn, They'll have the generic LinkedIn cover image. Some of you probably have that right now. You know what I'm talking about. Others, you'll notice, have this image. And you can put something that represents who you are, what you do, something that catches the eye of your target market, right? Use that banner, use that spot to reinforce that image, something that establishes your gravitas, your, um, your position in the industry. Sometimes people include a call to action. You could put a phone number there. You could put a website URL, something that's going to add value to your intended target. Does, does that make sense, everyone? Drop a, drop a yes in the chat if you're understanding what I'm talking about there. Going from me, 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 or incomplete profile to something that speaks to your target market. Are you getting this? I see the yeses coming in. LinkedIn, Facebook, I want to see those yeses coming in from you as well. So that's the first piece, establishing your brand. Now, second one, look at the red arrow here. We're going to talk about publishing content. All right. Now, I know some folks get scared when we talk about publishing content, but I'm going to give you some insights, some tips here that are going to diminish, hopefully, that fear for you. Because a lot of people, when we talk to them, say, oh, my gosh, you're asking us to put content out there. You know, they see this, this box, like what I, what I have here on the screen, right, where you go in and you post something. And they look like this young lady here. They're like, ah, what do I do? I'm scared, right? Well, there's two reasons, at least two reasons. I, I don't think you need to be scared anymore. First of all, you're not going to break anything. I know that some of you are scared because you want to be perfect. Uh, you want to get that perfect post. And that holds you back from getting out there and putting yourself out there. Forget about that. I know it's hard. I know it's easier said than done. But what you're learning here today, and in fact, the next strategy I'm about to share with you here is going to put you ahead of most people. You shouldn't be afraid to publish. You shouldn't be afraid to experiment. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? I know we often hear people who freak out and we look at the number of connections they have and it's like 100, right? And so McKinsey and I are always like, 
All right, dude. So you're worried about putting out a piece of content and you have a hundred connections. And by the way, about? not all those hundred connections, if you don't do it right, are going to see your post. So maybe yeah. like five people are going to see it, but you know, the thing is that I always like to say, and this has helped people and it helps me oftentimes is that sometimes there's a level of intimidation when you're on this platform and you're like, I have to be a thought leader, right? I have to go out there and say something really groundbreaking, right? And somewhere I heard it and, and I try to tell people this, you don't need to be a thought leader. You need to be a thought contributor. So contribute something to the conversation from stuff that you're experiencing, stuff that you're doing, you're, you know, all the things that you're doing on a daily basis. People learn from watching other people, right? There's a reason why people like to take a behind the scenes look because they want to see how people are doing it. So share your experience, become a thought contributor, and hopefully that takes some of the pressure off of being this amazing thought leader, right? There's a lot of different options too, Mackenzie, as you can see here on the screen, folks, um, there's different types of content that you can be sharing. We're not going into all of those today. I just want you to know that um, it's not like you have to necessarily create video, right? You could do just a text post with no image even, right? You don't have to even have an image if you don't want it. If you do have a video, you could do some text in a video. Maybe you don't know that you can upload a document. You can take a PDF um, if you click on this little icon right here and actually upload a case study or something that people can scroll through when they see your post, there's a lot of different options. There's even stories. I know some people say, look, getting my camera out and filming a video or being in front of a camera like this, that's intimidating. What do I say? What do I do? How many takes do I need? Well, LinkedIn stories are very short, 10, 15 second snippets of video. And the good news, they only last 24 hours. So what's the worst thing that's going to happen? Somebody's going to see it, maybe see it for 24 hours. So it takes the pressure off of you having to be perfect. That's the first reason. Second reason, I want you to really listen to this one. When I say publishing content, when McKinsey and I talk about publishing content, that also means well-written comments. So if you haven't yet worked up the courage to start producing content for your organization, or if your organization's not yet posting in this way, even dropping well-written comments will get you results. Look at Rachel here. Look what Rachel says. I've been calling on a design firm. I haven't done any work with them yet. They recently did a post. So this design firm posted something showing great political posters that they designed. I commented on it and just got an RFQ, right? The key is you should think about comments as a form of publishing as well because that'll help you get noticed by your market. Here's another example. Here's Shabby, right? She says, hey, I'm having a call tomorrow with the kind of potential client I've dreamed about for years. Uh, pray for me. Any tips for acing calls with high profile companies also appreciated. So she was asking more for like, hey, give me some help to figure out how to talk to this client that I just, uh, this potential client I just landed here. And so I go in, drop a comment, look what I ask her. How did you land the call? Did you know anybody there? I was asking more to try to get some uh, insight from her as to how she did that. And she actually said, look at this, surprisingly enough, well, you shouldn't be surprised anymore now, but she says, surprisingly enough, an executive from the company reached out after I commented on his LinkedIn post. You getting it? Does that make sense, everybody? Comments, comments, very, very powerful. So that's a little bit about publishing content, but I also want to show you hashtags. All right, so if you're taking notes, the next piece here as it relates to the content are hashtags. So these are hashtags, look at the screen. When you're publishing content on LinkedIn, can you see those, McKenzie? Yeah, these are hashtags, like where it says SaaS, founders, startups. That, those are three hashtags right there, all right? Now, what are hashtags as they pertain to LinkedIn? Hashtags are a way that you can tag your content when you're a producer of content, when you're publishing content, you can include them in your post. And what that'll do is give people who you're not connected to, who you don't know, the potential to see that content. How? Because they've said, hey, I want to hear more about, for example, let me go back here. I want to hear more about startups, right? So Neil here, by including this in his content, is putting that in front of people that he's potentially not connected with. That widens the reach of your content. Mackenzie, did you raise your hand there? Yeah, I was just going to say, so imagine there's someone who's a new founder of a business, right? And they want to, I don't know, maybe they want to follow another startup's um, journey or another founder's journey. 
right? And so they go on LinkedIn and they're looking for people and they're like, they go in, they search hashtag founders. When they search hashtag founders, a bunch of posts are gonna come up of other people who have tagged their content using a hashtag saying, this content is specifically for founders, right? So that hashtag is not just something that he put there, he put it there strategically so that other founders or other people looking for that content on SaaS startups or founders can go and find posts that are similar to that content. Kind of like back in the day, I don't know if you've ever done blogs previously or if you still do blogs at your company, you tag the blog page content with a tag that tells the audience in the world what that blog post is about. Because if I go into Google and I search yoga, right? It's gonna present a bunch of articles. Let's talk about yoga. And the reason it knows they're about yoga is because the content's about yoga and the publisher, the author of that blog post has tagged it with yoga. It's the same thing with hashtags. It's giving a sign to the world. This is what the content that I'm publishing is about. Now there's two ways to use hashtags. There's the foolish way. And then there's the wise way, which I've illustrated here with this, uh, this, this illustration. The foolish way, let me start there first, is to use a hashtag that's something like this one. Uh, hashtag, I'm so funny, look at me, right? I made that up, but you'll see that. Usually People... followed by a hundred other hashtags like that in a block <laughs> yeah. of text. Right. So if you see that in a post, now you'll start to wisen up. The reason why that's foolish in contrast to the wise way is that if you use a hashtag like, let's say, digital marketing, this hashtag actually has people listening to it. Something like this that you make up just to be cutesy and funny doesn't really get you anything. No one's tuned in to listen to that hashtag. So what you have to do is you need to find and start tracking and using hashtags that are relevant to your target market. You might find some easily. You might, it might take a little work to find the others, but hunt around and start to look for them. And then what we suggest you do is keep a list of them. This is, in fact, a list that we use internally, right? We have a column for the hashtags here. We monitor the growth rate. We have a little column here, column M, where as we're writing content, we just drop a little X in there. If we say, hey, this is, this is a hashtag that's related to that piece of content, all we then have to do is filter that list to the ones that have the Xs in them and grab that little list out and paste it into that post. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it's also a great way to foresee or be able to tell what the market is interested in, right? If you see a hashtag, let's call it founders, starting with, you know, 100 followers, and then over the next week, it's at 1,000, and it's grown that much, well, shoot, people are interested in founders, right? And so tracking these hashtags and looking at the growth over time enables you as a sales professional, as a leader, as a producer, to be able to see, hmm, what's the market interested in? What are some of the things that they're thinking of? Yep. Absolutely. So that's hashtags. Drop an X in the chat if you're following along there with the hashtags. That's really important. That's this piece right here. Publishing content using hashtags. I know we usually get a lot of questions about those. So we'll we'll come back and clean all those up and make sure that you understand. This is the third piece now I want to move to. The third piece is connecting with people on LinkedIn. All right. And what you need to do is establish trust and connections with companies and people on LinkedIn. Let me show you how you do that. The first thing you want to know is that you can find people on LinkedIn that are in your target market that are looking for products and services potentially like yours by searching, I'll show you how to do that, and engaging in their content. That's usually how, uh, that's usually a good first step in connecting. You can then, when you send a connection request, personalize or contextualize might be a better word, that connection request with a little note, right? So instead of just blindly sending them something, you can put a little note there that they're gonna see when they get that connection request that makes it more likely that they'll accept your request. Now, big, big thing here, folks. Act like a normal human being when you do that connection request. Please. <laughs> Don't start pitching on the first date, right? I use this example often. I call it the um, trade show networking lunch rule, if you will. You remember back when we used to go to trade shows and they'd have those lunches uh, like around noon or 1130 and everybody would go line up and then you'd sit down at those tables and everyone would- The big round you know, ones? Yeah, the big round ones with the white tablecloths. Everyone started networking. Now, if I sat down next to you, who is it here? Brad, let's say, right? And I immediately start pitching Brad. You think Brad's going to say, dude, this guy Dave is somebody I want to talk to? No, he'd probably be turned off. So right? Brad, how's it going? 
Oh, Brad, I saw you were in that last session about XYZ. What did you think about the speaker? Just engage in normal human conversation. Don't pitch. That's the trade show tabletop rule, if you will. So use that when you're thinking about how you're engaging people. It's the same thing. Just be human. Talk to them. Ask them about themselves. And don't pitch on the first date. A lot of opportunities to actually talk about what you do will arise through just natural engagement like you would have in the offline world. There isn't some deep, dark secret here. Provide value. Be normal. Be a human. People can smell through that pretense, right? And act as you would if you sat down next to me or if you sat down next to McKenzie at a trade show or some other event. Does that make sense? So that's how you want to connect. I'm going to show you a few more examples of that, but those are some basic rules around connecting. And then fourthly here, as you've repositioned your brand, as you're starting to publish content, as you're connecting with people, now you need to continue that engagement. I'm going to show you two powerful ways to do that. The first, and I've already talked a little bit about this, are through hashtags. I love how Gary looks in this picture right here. <gasps> right? <laughs> If you look over here on the screen, you'll see some hashtags over here in the lower left. I think you can see my mouse moving around right here. These yep. were some hashtags I was actually looking at for a client who happens to be in the home services space, right? So as you've searched for hashtags, they'll show up here. LinkedIn makes them really nice uh, and easy to keep track of. You'll see your recent ones right there. You see that? Now, let's imagine that your potential customer was in the home services space. Here's how you would use that hashtag list. When you click on one of those hashtags, content where people have used that hashtag will come up. You see that here on the right? Yep. Now let's say Dominic was a potential customer of yours. Look at this. Dominic's got, I can't see that, Mac, a small number of engagements. Maybe you can see it better than I. And no comments. Do you think, Brad, as an example, Michael, Kevin, if Dominic were a potential customer and you left a comment, not a pitch, but a comment, an engagement, a question, something with value, that Dominic wouldn't notice that? Dominic's the owner of this company. With no comments, he'd probably see that and see your name and maybe click your profile, see what you can do for him. Does that make sense? And again, so, just, just to connect this point to what you were talking about earlier on your profile, let's play this out, right? You leave a comment on Dominic's page. Dominic clicks your image. It goes to your page. It's inviting your photos there. And at the top, it says, I help companies fill in the blank, whatever Dominic is, right? He's in that ideal customer profile to do A, B, and C. So he sees your comment. He clicks your page. He goes to your page and he realizes, wait, Dave helps companies like me? get more clients or whatever fill in the blank that it is offer. Imagine how powerful that is when you've just been able to get visible in your prospects ecosystem. They've seen you engage their stuff. And then when they get to your profile, it's crafted so that they feel, wait, hey, Dave is someone that I need to be connected to. He helps companies like me. I'm in the right place. Right. So Christina, Steve, Kevin, I see you. Amira over on LinkedIn. Let us know if this is making sense to you. That's the first way. The second way Come up here to the upper left. You can see where my, my uh, arrow is right here. Come up there and enter in a search term that's relevant to your market. Uh, for example, I know we have a lot of folks here in, in commercial print, people who work with POP and signage, right? If you type a term or a phrase in like POP signage, you see this right here? And then click this option right here where it says posts. What'll happen now that we've refined it to posts is you will see content that is related to POP signage. And so as an example, we see Lindsay here, who's got a post talking about some signage, right? And you could find something like this one here from, from Ben. It's talking about something that maybe you can provide a product or a service for. And by the way, if I want to put a new sign outside my fitness building or whatever it is, and I type it in and I see Ben's page and look at this amazing signage that he's done for F45, I'm thinking, hmm, I don't have a provider to do it. Look at what Ben's been able to do for someone else. I'm going to reach out to Ben because he can probably help me. So you see how you make a connection with the content that you're posting to your prospects and customers looking for the exact product or service that you can offer. When you're able to make that connection, LinkedIn can help find 
customers for you and bring them to you because of that content that you put out there. The other thing you might want to uh, pick up here and notice is look at the look at the hashtags that Ben is using to talk about what he's doing. Now, as a producer of content, you should be paying attention. Click on those hashtags and see, you know what, how many people are actually listening to that hashtag? What kind of content is being shared with that tag? Are some of those people that I see engaging with that hashtag potential customers of mine? All right. That's another little tip here. Now, when you see a post like this one from Ben, here's what I would recommend you consider doing. Comment with your two cents. What do I mean by that? So look at this. Ben's got four engagements and two comments. So similar to what I just mentioned to you a second ago, he's the owner of a company you might be able to help. You drop a comment. He's likely going to see that. He's likely going to notice. Why don't you ask him a question? Again, don't pitch, all right? Ask a question. Maybe add some value. Even just liking his post for him and dropping a comment is a way of implicitly giving him value, right? He's going to get a little bit of an adrenaline boost Oops. from that. Exactly. Jinx. <laughs> Reply to somebody else's comment. Help him engage the conversation there under his post. Give maybe your unique insight, some angle that you have as an expert that might add to the conversation. Maybe you could describe a similar situation that you were in or something like that situation that you think might be funny or interesting. But whatever you do, in most cases, you shouldn't go in there and drop a comment that starts to pitch. You want to drop value instead and drop your two cents. Look at the value that you drop, even if it's just a like or an engagement or a comment, as actually giving away value. Hundreds. You see what I'm saying? The content that you're putting out there, the comments that you put out there, should have value behind them. Mac, you have a good yeah, point so, on this. Yeah, I was just going to say, so let's just imagine that one of the services that you offer is digital marketing services. Maybe you're an agency, right? And you see someone based on what you've, you know, using these hashtags and all the things Dave's just coached on, where someone has a question, hey, I'm getting low open rates on my emails, or hey, I'm trying to employ a digital marketing strategy, right? You're not going to go there and say, I can help you call me, let's get on the phone call. You're going to contribute to the conversation. You're going to comment something. Hey, if you're not getting good open rates, maybe you should change your subject line. Have you used a question? And that person then sees your comment, right? And they think, hmm, they have something to offer. And they may ask you another question, right? And so what you want to do is find the areas where you can offer some value. It doesn't have to be some monumental thing. It could be a little tip, a little trick, something that helps the people that have questions or that are posting things. And again, they come to the conclusion, oh, this person knows what they're talking about. Like Dave started to bring it full circle, the prospect or customer, the viewer has to come to the conclusion that you have something to say. You can't say I'm a thought leader, right? You want them to come to the conclusion by seeing, oh, this person's giving me some tips and tricks on my email marketing or my digital, my digital marketing, right? And then they go to their, your page and they see all the content you're publishing, the comments that you're leaving on other people. And they say, hmm, this person knows what they're talking about and I want to get in touch with them because they can probably help me, right? That's a natural way of becoming a thought leader in their mind. So I want you to flex this muscle right now. If you're on LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you're seeing us, if you're in one of the socials right now, hit the like button or click the heart, something, give it some action and drop a comment, especially if you've just been lurking there. Take this little opportunity to try this out. It's not scary. Nothing bad's going to happen. The benefits far outweigh that little bit of fear that you might feel right now. So if you're on LinkedIn, give me some hearts. Let's see those hearts coming in. Drop a yes in the chat. Drop something in the chat. That's a comment that adds some value. It's a small amount of value, but it's a way of you starting to work out that muscle and becoming accustomed to this process. Now, look at this um, here on the screen with, with Ben. Back to Ben one more time here. See where it says second? That means I'm not connected to Ben. You see that up here? I'm not yeah. connected to Ben. So if Ben's a potential client, I can connect with him send him a little note in that connection request and say, hey, I saw your awesome post about the F45 training. I'd love to connect with you. Something simple like that. Some context as to why you're reaching out. Does that make sense, everyone? That's how you make LinkedIn work for you. So the first piece here is establishing your brand, recrafting your profile. One of the questions I get a lot is how often should I be doing these things? How often should I be posting, commenting, engaging, updating my profile? Let me give you a little 
little insight into that. And everybody's got to find the rhythm that works best for them. Okay. But once or twice a month, take a look at your profile. Once you've gone through the guide and you've addressed those key 15 areas, look at it once or twice a month. See if you've learned something about your customers, about what they want, what they're looking for, something that you've mentioned maybe in a post that caught their attention, and update your profile with that new added insight. Secondly, when you're publishing content, how often should you be doing that? There's no magical right answer. But for you to start to get something out of this and to learn from it, three to seven times a week. For some of you, that might seem like a lot. I realize that. Even doing one a week might seem like a lot. But as you start to build this muscle, as you start to develop this out for your organization, for your sales team, for yourself, it gets easier, especially once you start to learn what works for your audience. Thirdly, how many connection requests? Well, 20, 25, 30 a day with people in your target market, thoughtful connections. Think about how that compounds week after week, month after month, quarter after quarter, year after year, 20 to 30 per day. doesn't take a lot of time. Don't tell yourself that it's going to take you 20 hours to do that. It doesn't take that amount of time. But if you do it thoughtfully, and if you do it every day, it starts to compound. Fourthly, this is going to seem like a lot. I know that. I would recommend that you think about dropping anywhere. You, usually the, the um, kind of the rule of thumb that I usually guide folks on is if you're doing, let's say, seven posts a week, you should be trying to drop out 70 comments. And I know that's a lot. But think about this. When people are commenting on your content, you got to be replying to them. Okay. So just right there, as people are engaging with your content, you have an opportunity to go back in and reply and make sure that you acknowledge them and further that conversation, especially if it's a prospect. Mackenzie, what's your thought on this? Yeah, the, the thought I want to make is that one of the things we talked about earlier is that a lot of people are scared to post, scared to comment, yeah. scared to engage, right? And I think from talking to people, the number one reason is because they're not doing it a lot, right? So if you're only posting once a month or you're commenting once a week, each comment, each post it feels really big, right? Because it's your single chance, my only post of the month. But once you get in a rhythm of doing this, you're, you're commenting 50 to 100 times, you're, you're in a posting multiple times a week, one comment, one post, one engagement is a much smaller percentage of your overall output. And the yep. smaller the percentage of your overall output each engagement has, the less you feel tied emotionally to the output of it, right? It's not like, this is my one at bat. You're like, Psh. I got a hundred at bats today. One of them yeah. is just one of them, right? It's, it's, just, it's just like anything. The more you do it, the more you get comfortable doing it. And the more comfortable you are, the more authentic you are, the more authentic you are, the more you start to attract your audience. So let's take a, let's take a breath here. Let's like take a beat, take a pause. Ooh. I want to slow down just for <laughs> one second because I know I get super excited about this. I know Mackenzie's passionate about it. I know we, we give you a lot of information and I know sometimes it feels like uh, drinking from a fire hose, right? Especially if this stuff is new. So I have a question for all of you. Facebook, LinkedIn, Zoom, wherever you're seeing us right now. Do you think you, Lindsay, Michael, Mark, Generosa, uh, Steve, I'm looking at all your names, Nitesh over on LinkedIn. Do you think you can do these steps? Do you think you can apply this framework? Tell us in the chat right now, Michael, Dar, I want to hear from you. Lindsay, I want to hear from you. what about you? Who? Derek. You're calling out Derek. All right, Mark. Mark says, it looks like I need to step up my game. Yes. Derek says, yep, I can do it. Yeah, you definitely can. Not at the numbers you described. Okay, Adam, that's understandable. Again, these are just some um, parameters to help you understand. Look, if it's not doing for you what you want it to be doing, I want to elucidate or put some light on why that might be the case. Martin says, you bet. I need to get on with it. Yep. Lindsay says, just getting into the space of my company and our LinkedIn struggles. So yes, I need to be doing this. All right, LinkedIn folks, over there in LinkedIn, I want to make sure I see you doing this. Do you think you can do this? Give us an answer there in the chat. If you feel like, gosh, this is a lot. Um, where do I start? How do I take steps in, in actually doing this on a daily basis? Mac, let's talk about the bigger picture here for a second and help folks kind of connect some of those dots. Yeah. So a, a lot of times we'll get to talk to people after these sessions and they'll say something like, so do you work for LinkedIn? Are you a LinkedIn agency? Right. And so I figured it might be helpful if we just kind of 
take a moment before we get ahead of ourselves and give a yep. big overview of the, or give an overview of the big picture of who we are at Mindfire and how this fits into the overall OptiChannel framework. So thank you, Dave, for flashing that on screen. As you may or may not know, at Mindfire, we really do three things. So first of all, we do all things OptiChannel. You're going to hear us saying that a lot. The first thing we do is uh, provide OptiChannel communication software. So that, enable, that enables you to communicate with your prospects and customers on the optimal channel consistently over a given period of time. Now we support that software with training, kind of like the one that we have today. So if you've been on any of our Friday sessions, or if you've been in our six week social selling and marketing training course, we wanna make sure and support that software with that training so that we can actually bring you the how to, right? Giving you the tips and tricks and strategies on how to actually do these things. And then lastly, we do opti-channel agency services. So for customers that say, you know what, we're not going to be able to do this ourselves. We want someone to help us do that. We do that, we do that as well. Um, but we often hear things like the, what you're seeing on the screen. So. Hey, Mackenzie, you know what? I don't have the contact information for the prospects I want to get in front of. Or, hey, Mackenzie, you know what? I want to use your software to communicate with people over time, but I really, our company's really trying to go in a new direction and they want to break into this industry, but we don't have a list. Should we buy a list? And so as we started hearing this, we felt like it was really important to bridge the gap between LinkedIn, this optimal channel right now where all your prospects and customers are hanging out. Right? We just went through how to get in front of them, how to find the right people. We wanted to bridge the gap between LinkedIn and OptiChannel saying, okay, you want to communicate with them. There's all these prospects and customers in this place called LinkedIn right now. We have this huge opportunity. How do we bridge that gap? How can we enable you to get those people, find who they are, and then start that? And so this takes time if you do it, right? Dave, Dave a lot of people said, hey, you know what? I can do it but I want you to take a moment and think about those 50 to 60 connections a day. How long is that going to take you? Now, you know, it's important. You want to do it, but just like anything, whether it's this, a gym regimen, cold calling, the thing that often stops people is that there's so many things to do. It stops you from doing one of those things. And so what we want to do is we want to help you not only bridge that gap, but give you a tool that enables you to what we call mechanize some of those things that take a lot of time. So that's why we created this next piece we're going to walk you through. I just wanted to lay some foundation and give you some context as to how does this all fit into the big picture of Mindfire and why we're here on this training today? Does that help, cool. Dave? Yeah, that that's good. So we've, we've been through why this is important. We've shown you um, the framework. And now what we want to show you some of the tools like Mackenzie just mentioned that are going to help you mechanize some of this process and employ this um, at a scale that's sustainable for you and your organization. And this is something that's, that's brand new. Um, as I mentioned at the start, uh, it's called the Social Selling Assistant. It's part of the MindFire technology suite. And what it is, it's a little Chrome extension. I'm not going to get into the geeky details, but I really want you to understand what it can do for you relative to the framework that we just looked at. So what I did... Thanks for the great setup there, McKenzie. Is I took the, the four-step framework that I just taught you, which you can do starting now. Nothing's keeping anybody from being able to do this. You all can do this now. But let me show you kind of how the software mirrors what I just trained you and how it helps you mechanize many of those steps. So the first thing that, this is the MindFire software right here you're seeing on the top of the um, illustration here. The first thing it'll help you do just like we talked about here and recrafting your profile with a target market in mind is it'll ask you, Hey, what is a market that you want to go after? Give the system a market, a target market. This could be a new vertical for you. This could be your existing clients. And this little example here, since we have a lot of commercial printers that are in our audience, let's just imagine for a moment that we created a target market called printers. Okay. And within that market, as I mentioned to you, it's very, very important to publish high value content, but we know that it's difficult in some cases to come up with that content. So here's what the system will do for you. It will find for that target market content that other people have written that's likely resonant with your audience. Now, if that makes you scratch your head for a second, you're like, wait, I don't get it. How, how does that work? The system will find content written by others and bring back the social signals that give you a clue as to how well it's working with your target market so that 
you can share that with your audience. Now, when you share it, it also gives you a way to take viewers of that content and siphon them from there back to your website or back to a landing page. Okay, I'm not going to go into all of the details, but it's a really powerful way of finding content that's already working, written by other people or organizations, giving you insight into how it's working so you can push it out to your network and then siphon interested readers back to you. All right. Now, we talked about hashtags, especially as it pertains to um, publishing content, right? Hashtags are also part of what you can monitor here in the MindFire uh, technology here. So as an example, I've got two hashtags, print and printing, and the system will monitor how many people are following those tags. And you can also tell it, look, go update those counts. Get me the latest number of people following those. And go and engage with a few of the most recent posts that are using that hashtag. And so when you press that button, the social selling assistant will start to, start to operate and start to do that stuff for you. It's doing it on your computer. It's happening right on your desktop, in your browser, in your Chrome browser, and we'll start to go and engage in those hashtags with that content. Does that make so sense? The people, yeah, so the people who have published that content, remember how we showed you, you can see who likes your posts and stuff. The yeah. social selling assistant is gonna go and engage with those posts. So let's say I actually wrote one of those posts. I'm gonna see that Dave just liked, as an example, my post. So instead of you actually going there, finding it, searching it, liking it yourself, it's going to mechanize that for you within the audience, the target market that you've, you've segmented based on those hashtags. Now, once you've done that, the next kind of uh, bucket here or tab inside of that bucket, inside of that target market is what we see here, companies. Okay. And remember, I encourage you to connect with people and companies in your target market. So what the software does Mackenzie, you mentioned this, a lot, of, a lot of folks, organizations, big and small, say, just don't have a list of new, fresh companies and people to engage, right? The system is going to start to pull in companies inside of that target market. And then look, do you see this button here, Mac? You see this where it says, find people who work here? Everyone okay. see that? Yep. When you click that, it will go and find employees and you can say, bring me C-level people, bring me mid-level people. You can tell it what to bring you back. Bring back individuals who work there, find their email addresses, enrich each of those rows with an email address, and even find their LinkedIn profile. Does that make sense? Now, That's when, the when you do the that- gap, right? That's exactly yeah. the gap that we were just talking about. As those people come in, then you can tell the system, look, go and connect with those individuals, right? Help me um, follow them. Go engage with their content. Send them a connection request. You can even personalize the connection requests that you want to send to that individual. You have the ability to control all of that to help you mechanize that part of the process. Now, in addition to the system finding those for you, you can also right here, uh, see where it says find more people from LinkedIn. When you click that, you can uh, go and type in a keyword or an industry or something like that that has applicability to the market you want to go after, okay? In this example, I just put in printers, right? So I typed in printers and it comes back with a list of people. This is being uh, pulled from LinkedIn, people that I can potentially connect with and start to engage with, right? So I can check off the people I want to bring in or if that's too wide of a filter, I can start to narrow it down here by just saying, maybe I can just type uh, owners right here and just find the owners of these print organizations. And by doing that, then the system will start to bring these people back in here, place them all here for me. And now I can email them. I can call them. I can start to connect with them on LinkedIn and use this social selling framework that I've taught you to begin to engage those people and bubble them up to the surface. So it's helping you do all of these four things, right? And really, one, two, and three are what I just showed you. Four is where you're going in and writing comments and engaging with people. That's something you still need to do, right? You got to put your mind into that. Your brain needs to be in that. But with a lot of these things kind of mechanized behind the scenes for you now, it frees you up to be able to do these things. Mackenzie, were you going to add a point there? No, I was just going to say it's kind of related, but we were on a meeting, as you know, Dave, earlier, I think it was on Wednesday, we have this leadership meeting. And if anyone knows Jason Voigt from our team, he's awesome. But one of the things he was saying that really stuck in my mind is 
we should always be continuously looking at the things that we're doing and figuring out how are we doing them the best way? Why are we doing those things? Is there a reason for them, right? So if you're sitting here thinking, you know what, I'm doing these things, but I'm not getting the results you want. Sometimes doing the thing doesn't always lead to the outcome you want because you may not, not be doing them the most optimal way. You may be publishing content, but maybe you're not using hashtags to find the yeah. right audience. You may be established, you may have a LinkedIn profile, but the profile might not be optimized to attract the audience that you want, right? So I want you to take yep. a moment and take stock of where you are. If you're doing things like this and you're not getting results or you're not yet doing it right, sometimes it's important to reevaluating how you're doing it and adjust the strategy so that you can impact your results, right? Impact the output that you're going to get from, in this case, LinkedIn and OptiChannel. So there's two things you can do with this information that I've given you now and that we've trained you on and, and these tools that you can be using. Number one, and I want to make sure you pay attention here because the second piece of this is something that a lot of people don't think about. Two ways what we've shown you today brings you value. Number one, you can do this yourself or use this framework for yourself and your, or your sales team to be able to find and engage new prospective customers, right? That should be clear by now. But secondly, for some of you that are service providers, so that could be an agency, a marketing services company, think about how you can take what you've learned. And once you get good at it yourself or your organization, this is a high value service that companies pay for. How can you start to sell this as a service, wrapping the other things that you do for your customers and use this to differentiate and provide significant value to your customer base? Mackenzie, were you going to add something there? I saw you yeah, move. I just wanted to make a, a, I want to connect the dots. So let's just say sure. that you offer print right now or digital marketing or whatever it is. And one of the things that you want to offer to your customers as tangential services to what you currently offer is to help them with their LinkedIn strategy right? How you can do it is you can go find an article or even the guide that we're going to give you for free about how to craft a great LinkedIn profile, right? You use the tool to put that guide on your social media. Now people from, you're going to use hashtags. You're going to use, you're going to find the target market that you want. Now people that are interested in recrafting their LinkedIn are going to want the guide, right? So they're going to download the guide. Now that person who downloaded the guide is a great prospect to start to nurture and drip on and have a conversation. Hey, it looks like you were interested in the guide. Why do you want the guide? Oh, I wanted to give it to all of our salespeople. So our salespeople upgraded their profile because they're having to do more selling on LinkedIn. Oh, awesome. One of the things I offer is X. I offer LinkedIn training or I offer LinkedIn campaigns or whatever it is that you do. So again, that's how you sell it as a service. You use the Opti channel framework that Dave just described to do it for your own business, to market these important topics to the audience. And then as people engage with it, it's a natural next step. Hey, you want it. You're interested in crafting your profile. You're interested in fill in the blank we can help by doing this, right? So you can sell this as a service because again, less than 1% of people are publishing content. You have an opportunity to be part of that 1% and to go help other people be part of that 1% as well. Yeah, well said, Mac. I couldn't have said it better. I want to get to everybody's questions. So Mindfire team, uh, Mike, Suzanne, Jessica, whoever I'm forgetting, Craig, start to assemble those top questions that we've missed. And folks, put those into the chat right now, whether you're in Zoom, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever you are, let's get to your questions. But Mackenzie, I want to give you an opportunity um, because I see some folks saying, okay, how do I take the next step? What, what can you do to help me? I want to learn more about this. Share a little bit about how we can help there um, and, and give our team some time to pull all those questions together. Yeah, so uh, we're, as we're pulling the questions together, just so you know, we have blocked out time to speak with a few members on, on our team here who are willing to say, listen, how are you doing this? What are you doing? And how can we help you accomplishing, accomplish that? A lot of people have been in the commenting se section saying, I want that. How can I get that? How do I get started? And again, we want to make sure that we have a conversation with you to see what you're actually trying to do, what your business is, how you're going to either do it yourself or offer it as a service. And so, yeah, we've blocked out time on our calendar to speak one-on-one -on -one with you about what you're currently doing and how we can help you, um, how we can help you reach your goals. So if you are a service provider, an agency, a printer, a marketing service provider, and you're looking to know how can I offer these services to my clients, or I'm offering some of them, how do I expand those offerings? This is for you. If you're a business trying to help your salespeople or yourself, you're trying to help yourself get more opportunities on LinkedIn, this is for you as well. 
Yep. So <laughs> that's exactly who it's for. And what you can do is you can go to this link. So it's mindfiremarketing.com slash yes. I'll put it in the chat right now. All okay. you need to go is go to that link, fill out the information. And one of our awesome team members will reach out. We'll find out some more information and we will schedule a one-on-one -on -one at a time that's best for you. So we can have that conversation. So Mackenzie, you, you can drop that in right now. And then Suzanne and Mike Charcuzio and everybody else that's in the chats, please drop that in while Mackenzie's doing that. And then Max, so specifically, what are we what are we going to do on that call? If you can just kind of give us an idea of how we can help as we're talking to folks one on one. Yeah, so I mean, at the end of the day, the call is personal to you. The reason why we're not having a group call is because we really want to learn about who you are and what your goals are. So yeah, exactly. We want to get clarity on exactly what your goals are. And then we're going to give you specific next steps on how you can achieve those goals with OptiChannel social selling and marketing. So we're going to say, look, here's what you're trying to do. Here's the prescription for it. Kind of just giving you the roadmap of how you're going to get to go about that and how you can learn to employ this social selling framework for your own businesses and or for your clients' businesses as well. So does that make sense? Yeah, totally Who's makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I see um, uh, Michael saying, do you do you work with startups? Uh, Michael, we've worked with startups. We do work with startups, but let's chat. Let's see if this is something that's a fit for you. Um, you can see um, there on the screen and it's in the chat, mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. We give you permission to, to turn us down for a second. Go over there. Mackenzie, I think we have a limited number of, of spots. So if you're interested, folks, go over there and sign up now. And then McKinsey, also, I think uh, if you could talk a little bit more for just a moment, give our team another second to pull those questions together. Talk about the social selling assistant and how that kind of fits into the MindFire platform. Yeah. So as Dave was mentioning before, and as we kind of laid that context, there's really two portions of OptiChannel marketing, right? There's the who are we going to market to? We'll call that the top of the funnel. And that's where the social selling assistant that Dave just walked you through comes in, right? Because that's going to enable you to find those contacts, your ideal customers and prospects. And then once you have those, you got to communicate with them, right? You don't, nothing works yep. if you just have a list or a database of people, right? You got to start engaging. You got to start communicating. So we have two portions to our platform, which naturally fit together. Again, the social selling aspect is new because we wanted to bridge the gap between all the people that were running awesome programs but that wanted to tap into a new market that wanted to add new names at the top of the funnel. So what we've done is we've added that social selling assistant. It fits nicely in our product and allows you to bridge that gap between the people you want to market to and the communication you're doing. And again, our solution offers the entire package end to end. So what we wanted to do, we thought it would be fun. We did have this session last week, just for some, as we call them, family members, customers. And a lot of people were really interested in adding this on. So we thought it would be fun um, for people on this webinar only. So again, this is a special offer just for you. For the first 10 people that actually sign up for the MindFire platform, we're going to give you some extra added value in terms of the social selling. So Dave, if you want to just hit next. Yep. So we're going to give you the ability to create up to 10 target markets, finding those markets of your choice. Next, this is a big one. You're going to be able to retrieve unlimited articles. I want to underscore the importance of this because the next big, biggest thing that we hear behind I need more data is, well, I don't have time to publish content, right? That's no longer an excuse now yeah. because this solves for that by providing you content that's relevant to your audience. So you're going to be able to retrieve unlimited articles. You are going to be able to visit up to 10 hashtags per day. And again, if you're thinking 10 is not enough, I humbly submit that if you do well with 10, it's better than following a hundred and not doing anything with them, right? No one gets mm. brownie points for following the hashtags. It's about how you follow them, how you find the people and how you actually, again, you've got to do the engagement part. So 10 is a sweet spot where it's going to give you enough. And then yeah, visit up to 10 companies per day. I want you to think about how long you're spending prospecting right now. How long are your sales team members spending prospecting right now, thinking about who should I follow? Where can I find them? How do I use LinkedIn, right? We're going to feed you that. We're going to enable you to mechanize the following of those 10 hot companies a day. So again, you can start to engage with them, bring them value, and then they're going to come in that. They're going to want to learn about, hey, how can you help me? And then the ultimate unlock is once you follow those companies, you can go on LinkedIn and start to engage with the people. And we urge you to do that. 
But if you're looking for a strategy where you can actually find the specific people, the CMOs, the directors of marketing, as an example, at those companies that you just followed, our tool is going to enable you to actually extract information on those people. So again, you've now filled your bucket, the top of your bucket with names, and then you can start to consistently communicate with them, bring them value, and ultimately start to grow your revenue and sales and or grow your customers' revenue and sales. And yep, you're gonna, we're in this free offer. I actually forgot about this part. We're, gonna, we're giving it away more. So we're going to enable you to find and import up to 50 people per day from LinkedIn. Again, I want you to think about the time you're spending prospecting and guessing their email address, right? This takes that guesswork out of it. How many times have you tried, you know, d.rosenthal at, D Rosenthal at, right? Trying to guess those email addresses. This is going to help you bring those people from LinkedIn in your ideal customer profile with the right customer type, right? The senior leader or the marketing people and bring them into your marketing communications. And yep, lastly, it's going to mechanize the ability for you to visit and connect with up to 10 people a day. So remember a second ago, we said you found those articles and you can actually go and like them, comment on it, engage with it, right? This is going to enable you to scale that out. So you're spending less time doing the clicking and more time doing this, actually having conversations and actually leaving value bombs, actually asking questions, actually being who you are and starting to develop a relationship with those people. So Mindfire TM, I'm giving you 30 seconds here um, before we're going to be asking you for those questions. <laughs> 30 so seconds. That's you. That's your warning, folks. So everybody who's uh, listening to McKinsey uh, provide you with this information and give you the opportunity to talk to us. You have you have two options at this point, folks. The first option is, you know, take everything that you've heard today, all of this important information, everything that we've tried to impart upon you and do absolutely nothing with it. What's going to change in your business? What's going to change in your life? What's going to change with your organization if you don't take any steps? Probably nothing, right? So if your business is perfect, if things are going great and you have nothing to worry about, Wonderful. But if you're looking to improve your ability to connect with your customers and prospects, if you realize that what you used to do just doesn't work anymore or is harder and harder, I recommend you look at the second option, which is take us up on this offer. Let's talk. Let's see if selling or using OptiChannel services, either for yourself and your organization or selling it as a service to your customers, is something that makes sense. There's no obligation. We're not charging you for that. And just say, you know, Mackenzie, Dave, team, not sure if this is for us. It might be, but let me find out. Just think of it that way. So go over there. That's what you're going to see when you go to the form, mindfiremarketing.com. Mindfire team, I'm giving you uh, 10 or 15 more seconds and that's it. Go to that form. That's what you're going to see. Give us your name, your email, your phone number. Tell us a little bit about what you want to accomplish. The more you can put there, the more you can describe about your situation, uh, the better, so that we can help you um, assess and get the right people on our side on that conversation to help you assess if this is something that's going to be for you. Mac, I know a lot of people wonder if this is the right kind of thing for them. Can you talk us through that a little bit? Yeah, so you can just put them up you on the screen here. Number one is if you're thinking we're using five other tools to do this or we're doing it manually. Is there a time, like I said a few minutes ago, where, hey, I need to reevaluate what we're doing. Is this the best way we can do it, right? If you don't think you're a fit yet, maybe you think, oh, I've tried this before and I've failed. Or, you know what, Dave, we're not techies. You seem like a techie, you can do it. Or, hey, you know, what? we're not marketers, right? I'm not exactly sure what to say. There's so many different things you can think of. We're too big, we're too small, right? And again, those thoughts are normal. It's normal because your brain is saying, hey, I'm uncomfortable. I haven't done these things before or I'm comfortable doing them the way I'm doing. But again, I want to ask you if your results, if your output is not where you want it to be, or even if it is, but you want to go higher, what you can do today is going to impact your future revenue, your future sales, your future growth. But the first step in actually getting there is taking a leap, right? You've got to have a call. You got to figure out, hey, is this something that I can employ? Is it going to help me? And by the way, if it's not going to help you, we're going to be the first ones to tell you, hey, you know what? It looks like what you're doing is good. Yeah. I suggest you do X, Y, and Z. Or yeah. hey, you know what? Based on what you said, I don't really think this is a fit. I think you might want to try doing 
whatever it is, right? Yep. This is we turn away people home. all the time. If it's not a good exactly. fit, we will be up front with you. Uh, Generosa, I see you asking where to go and, and uh, schedule some time with us. If you, uh, Mac, if you don't mind, drop that link back in the chat. Yep. Same with Suzanne and Mike. Also here, Generosa, you see it on the screen, www.mindfiremarketing.com forward slash yes. Go there and you'll have an opportunity to, uh, to get some time with us. One more piece of data that I want to share with you folks. And then we're just going to, we're going to do questions as long as it takes here. A couple things that I want you to remember, especially if you're like me and you like the numbers, you like the data, here's some <laughs> facts. Okay. On LinkedIn, 92% of buyers engage with you. If you're seen as a thought leader, the framework, the philosophy, everything that we trained you on today, along with, if you decide to make an investment in technology to help you mechanize that is going to help your organization is going to help you get to that position. That's the first thing. Secondly, if you know how to correctly view 10 or more profiles of people in your target accounts, you're 69% more likely to exceed quota. Who wants to exceed quota? Show of hands. Drop an X in the chat if you want to exceed quota. Drop an X wherever you are. Mackenzie, you too. <laughs> Me too. You're 70% more likely to get an unexpected sale if you're engaged in the right way in a LinkedIn group. Drop a one in the chat who if you want to get an unexpected sale. sale. <laughs> yeah, who, who, who doesn't bluebird, like that? A bluebird, as we call it. Yep. So this is really, really important, folks. And this matters now more than ever because as you're putting that content out there, some days, some weeks, some months, you might think, shoot, no one's listening to me. No one's hearing what I'm saying. No one's commenting. No one's liking. But let me remind you of something. That stat, less than 1% of people are producing content. 99% are passive consumers. You never know who's looking at your content. Here is a, a real life text message from a, what was it, McKinsey? $170,000 sale yep. that had consumed our content, never seen us face to face completely done over the phone during the pandemic that was as a result of or influenced heavily by this strategy. Look what this person says. It's funny how life works. I talked to you three years ago when comparing Mindfire 2 and he mentioned another organization. You always kept in touch. Well, you know the secret now, folks, right? There's some system behind that, right? Yep. I basically hate everyone. <laughs> You're a real good dude, right? No like, and trust is what is a byproduct of this philosophy. You built trust with me as I saw you grow and develop. Your random acts of kindness is why we went with you without even discussing price. You are your brand. People don't understand that. We didn't even question price because you had my trust and therefore my partners. That's what you can do with this. So I'm going to shut up. If you want to take our time and if you want to be able to uh, learn more about how this works for your business, you know where to go. We've put it in the chat. Mindfire team, you've had plenty of warning. Let's start to get to some of those questions. Mackenzie, what's the first one that you see here? All right. First one, and I think this is going to be helpful for many people. So Lindsay H says, when developing a company page on LinkedIn, it needs to be created through a user account. Whose account would you suggest is the best user to have it connected to? So that's part one. And then part two, should I be posting as my company or posting as me? So why don't you take that one? Yeah, that's, you know, those are good questions. So I'll, I'll start with the second one, actually. So who, who said that? Lindsay, you said? Lindsay. Yeah, Lindsay, it's a great question. We hear that often. Um, I would recommend, you know, I recommend you do both. You test both. Uh, there's, there's pros and cons to both. Uh, I'll start with the personal profile side. Why would you post in your personal profile? Uh, often uh, what we see, what we find is that the human to human connection, the person to person connection that a personal profile has with your potential audience is stronger is better, is more conducive to engagement than a stodgy, stiff corporate brand. Does that make sense? So people connect with people, which is the opportunity you have as a person on LinkedIn. Now, company pages, LinkedIn is investing in improving them. They're doing a lot of investment right now in company pages. They also have an advantage in that, let's say, Lindsay, you find a piece of content that works well for you on your personal profile. If you can repurpose that, not share it, but repurpose it as a new post through your company page. You can actually put a couple of dollars behind that via ad spend. And it's like um, throwing gas on the fire. 
So you can find something that worked really well organically, put a little gas on that fire and really have it go wild with your company page. You can't do that with your personal profile. You don't yet have a way to boost it with any ad spend, but you can do that on your company page. Lindsay, let me know if that answers your question. That was, I think, your second question. Your first question was, uh, which user should be associated? I don't know that there's any particular pro or con to who you pick, but as long as it's somebody who's you know, going to be committed to maintaining that Active, page, whoever yeah. You have, yeah, whoever you have assigned to it, that's where I would start. Uh, but Lindsay, let me know if you have a more uh, nuanced question there that maybe um, you want us to get to. So Maureen, I says, thanks for the, inf says, thanks for the informative course. Lindsay says, yes, thank you. Lindsay, if you have any follow-ups, we're happy to answer that. Mac, what's next? Yeah, next one is someone asked, how long have you been building your LinkedIn audience? And I wanted to answer this without just answering them uh, sure. in text, because I think it's important to lay some expectations here that if you do all this today, the world doesn't change tomorrow, right? So how long have you been doing it? And one of the, what are some of the things that you've gleaned from that process? Mackenzie, you probably remember better than I do. Uh, a long 18, time? 18 to 24 months, I would say. But is that, you know, my, my sense of time is pretty bad these days. Is that about right? Yeah, I think that's, I mean, we always kind of knew it was important, but I think in the last 18, 24 months is when we started to really see the signals that LinkedIn was giving us showing. I mean, there was one time and Dave, you know, this, I posted something and I got 85,000 views on my post. Yeah. I don't have 85,000 followers. Right. And so as we started right. to see some of those signals and we started to pe see people responding to the content that we put out that we're like, wait, this is really important. Right. We don't yep. want to, we may, you may have missed the boat on Facebook. You may have missed the boat on Instagram. You may have missed the boat on things before, but it's still so early. You have the opportunity to do that now. So we've been doing it for quite a long time, but it's still producing phenomenal results. And again, I mean, when you're on LinkedIn, it feels like, wait, there's lots of stuff going on. There's lots of posts, but that's why I love that you put the stat about less than 1%, right? It seems like a lot's going on. But men and women, if you are here on this call, we are at the very, very beginning. We're like on the on-ramp of the curve, right? We, the, when you start to see an adoption curve, like we're not even on the curve yet. We're on the on-ramp. I really want to underscore the importance of the opportunity that you have here today, right? We're still there. It's not too late. This is your chance. Yep, absolutely. Um, okay, so Catherine said, and I think you answered this, but again, just maybe for everyone else in case they missed it, how do you follow a hashtag on LinkedIn? Sure. So uh, when you search in LinkedIn, uh, maybe I can even uh, do that. Let's see. Live? Yeah, live. Let's see here, Mackenzie, if we can uh, hold this up here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the other screen. All right. So can you confirm you can see LinkedIn now, Mackenzie? Yep. All right, cool. So I'm going to come up here. And who asked that question? That was Catherine. Catherine. All right. So Catherine, I'm just going to search for uh, print. Let's say that's the hashtag that I'm interested in. So you see how I came up here. I typed in pound hashtag. That's one way. I think I showed you that earlier around how you can find content that's using that hashtag, right? Um, let's pick one of the ones that are, that's here on the list. I'll use printing as the example for you here. When this page comes up that's dedicated to this hashtag or that's showing this hashtag, you see, you have, you'll see, a, if you're not following it, you'll see a button here that says follow. Okay, I'm already following it, but you'll be able to click that button and follow that hashtag. Does that make sense? So you can go there, do that. Um, if, you, if you know another hashtag, you can just change it up here in the URL. Let's say it's um, print, which I know also exists. Um, I'm already following that as well, but you would see the button there. And as you scroll down, you'll be able to see the content that others are using that hashtag in. So let me know if I answered that question. Let me know if that makes sense. Yep, that makes sense. And again, you can use hashtags, A, to find stuff that you want to learn about, but B, to find people who want to learn about topics and things that you can provide, right? Your customers and prospects. Uh, okay, next question. So we had someone asking about, Maureen asking about, can you use the guide in the way you just described? So Maureen, I think that when you ask this, I was talking about, or we were talking about selling this as a service. And the example I gave was using our guide as what we call a lead magnet, as a valuable piece of content that you can put in front of your audience as a way to get signals or, or information about who's interested in LinkedIn. So the thesis there is you post a guide on LinkedIn 
about the 15 things that you can do to you know, improve your LinkedIn profile. Now, let's just say I'm one of your connections or you hashtag LinkedIn marketing or something like that that has a lot of followers. And let's call it you know, Adam. Adam sees that guide and says, shoot, I want to improve my profile because I really need to get into high gear using LinkedIn because I can't sell the way I used to sell. I'm not able to get in front of prospects. They're not answering the phone. I need to use LinkedIn. So he goes to your page. He clicks on the, on the link. And he goes to the landing page and he fills out the guy in for the form to get that guide, right? Again, Adam wants to improve his profile. Adam sees your post. He clicks on the link. He goes to the landing page. He puts in his information. He gets that guide. Now, you now have Adam and Adam's information. If Adam was interested in improving his profile, it's probable that Adam's interested in using LinkedIn for his business or something right like that, right? He didn't just go out of his way to download that guide for fun. So if he downloaded that guide, it's a signal to you that Adam's interested in leveraging LinkedIn. Now, when you reach out to Adam, you say, hey, Adam, thank you so much for downloading the LinkedIn guide. What, what, what was your objective with it, right? What, what were you trying to learn? By the way, have you checked your social selling index score? He's like, no, what's that? And then you send him the link. And Adam clicks the link and he goes and does the SSI and Adam sees that he's got 32. And Adam says, shoot, I got a 32. I need to improve this. And you walk him through how that social selling index is judged, right? And you walk him through the engagement, how to craft your profile, the post. And he goes, shoot, I really need help with this. And this is important. Well, do you think Adam's going to come to you for more questions? Do you think Adam's going to start to trust you and want to work with you to help him? the likelihood is high, right? Because you've delivered so much value and you've gotten the signals that Adam's interested in it. So I just wanted to play that out and how you can use these things to offer that as a service to your prospects and customers. I have a question for everybody that's here in LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Zoom. Let me know uh, the answer to the following question. This is something that I often ask if you've been in any of our sessions, look at the screen. I want to know in today's presentation, in today's material, in today's workshop, what was the thing that you learned, the thing that you heard, maybe something I said or something McKinsey said or one of the stats or one of the aspects that we trained you on that gave you that aha moment? I want you to take a moment. I want you to take a minute. Think about that and then write it in the chat for us, please. If you're in Zoom, if you're in LinkedIn right now, if you're in Facebook, I want to hear what that thing was, that insight that you had that unlock that you had, the light bulb moment for you, because it's really interesting. So David is saying, uh, for D David S., who's here in Zoom, is saying the SSI score uh, was, was his unlock. David, remind us, what was your SSI score? I want to hear from the rest of you as well. I still see many of you here. Adam says that LinkedIn represents an emergent adoption curve in terms of the ratio of content to users. Very well said, Adam. David says his score is 39. He has a little sad face. David, turn that around. Make that a happy face. That means you have a tremendous amount of opportunity, David. If you choose to put the time into this, if you choose to take this on, if you choose to say, yes, this is the way the world is going, I need to get on board, you have a big opportunity. There you go, David. You have a big opportunity, and you've got a fantastic name, so you can't go wrong, right? <laughs> McKenzie doesn't like the dad joke there. Yeah. All right. What else stood out to you, folks? What else was it that you heard today? Over in LinkedIn land on Zoom, what was it that gave you that aha moment? I want to hear from Alan, Alex, Brad, Cameron, who's here, Catherine, Charlotte, uh, Dave T, who's here, David, uh, a bunch of Davids, Generosa, Lots what was it for you? strong names today, Dave. Yeah, a lot of strong names. Yeah. <laughs> Any McKenzie's that are here? No? No. Somebody with the last name McKenzie, last though, name. I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gave away their first name. <laughs> uh, Thomas. Hey, Thomas. It's good to see you. I'm talking to Thomas H specifically. I haven't seen you in a while. Sean is here. RJ, Mario, Mark. Uh, I'd love to hear from you folks. Go over there in the chat. Um, let's see. I see a, a, a question here uh, from somebody that uh, signed up for the class and submitted this in advance. Let me see who's, whose name it was. It looks like it was Steven. Um, said, I've been on LinkedIn for years and I don't think I've gotten one job or one new customer from LinkedIn. What do I need to do? I'd like to hear audience, now that you've been through this, folks that are here with us right now, the question was, I've been on LinkedIn for years and it hasn't gotten me one customer, one job. What do I need to do? You know what that is now, right? Likely, I don't know if Steven is here right now with us, but it's likely 
that he's not following these four things. His profile is crafted incorrectly, potentially. He's likely not publishing content consistently. He's probably not connecting with his target market with purpose and intention. And he's probably not engaging with his audience, right? Now you can understand where folks sometimes uh, just miss the mark in terms of being able to use LinkedIn successfully. All right, Mackenzie, what's next here? Okay, next question. Let's see. I want to find the exact way they worded it. It was pretty good. Alexa sees the, says the uh, takeaway was keep your content consistent with your brand and keep connecting with those who will be valuable to you and co contribute to your industry overall. Yes. Okay, so here's the question. And I like this one. What's the best strategy for finding hashtags that will produce prospects rather than similar vendors? And I answered it, um, but you can give your sure. take and I can give my take live. Yeah, why don't you give your take and then let me think while you're saying that. Yeah, so I think a lot of times we overcomplicate it because we try to do things without actually looking at the data. So my suggestion is that you go find five of your best customers and five of the best prospects. They're prospects where you're like, oh, if I could win that account, I'd really be golden. Now what I want you to do is go visit their LinkedIn. Once you visit their LinkedIn to a few of the people there, I want you to look at all activity. I want you to see their posts. And I want you to look at the posts that they're engaging with. Yeah, so Dave's going to simulate this live. Imagine Dave, Daniel, excuse me, Daniel Murray is a prospect of yours that you want to get in front of. Go look at his activity. See where Dave's going to say, see all activity? Yep. You're going to look at his activities, his articles, his posts, and his documents. And then when you look at those things, I want you to start to look at it from the producer's eyes, right? As Dave mentioned before, I want you to see what are they talking about? What are they posting about? What questions are they asking other people? What hashtags do the posts that they're following have, right? Then you can start to mirror those. Again, when you can look at the activity and behavior of your best customers and prospects, you can get into their psyche a little bit, right? You can put yourself in their shoes and start to say, okay, if they're looking for X, Y, Z, A, B, you can start to provide information in X, Y, Z, A, B. So that would be my suggestion. What about you, Dave? Yeah. Um, let me see what Jenna Rosa just said here. Your presentation has helped me overcome the hesitancy in commenting, posting, and so forth. Jenna Rosa, that's exactly what we want to be able to do for you here. Start with the stuff that seems easier to you. If it's commenting, engaging in a post, start there and then move to actually posting. Um, Mackenzie, to answer that question, I, I mean, I would answer it similarly to you. Um, also, you know, like the idea of coming up here and searching for things that might be related to um, or like trade show signage. Like if yeah, I was going, like you know, ask yourself if I was a prospect or customer and I wanted fill in the blank with your product or service, what would I be asking? Right. Yep. And, and, and then see, if you scroll down here, you can see, for example, here are posts that are related to that term. And I kind of showed you this in the training today, but, you know, maybe take a look at um, if, you, if you're feeling like the hashtags that you're using are mostly competitors talking about stuff and less about customers, then maybe check out some of these posts here and see if you can reverse engineer. This one doesn't happen to have a hashtag, but see if you can reverse engineer what it is that they're using in that post. Let me see if, if any of these have an example of a hashtag in them. Um, it looks like they don't, but that's kind of what you would want to do is just start clicking through here and see, you know what, maybe there's a hashtag that you're missing. Here's, here's some good ones, right? Hey, now, stop what you're doing and go read what Charlotte wrote in the chat. Charlotte, got to love you for this one. All right. Charlotte says, Charlotte, by the way, is my first daughter's middle name. Oh, I didn't even yeah. know that. Uh-huh. When you comment on potential clients' posts as opposed to just liking it, people notice. I commented on a prospect's post in February 2021 that I had connected with in July 2020, and they just sent me an RFQ, and I got the job. Woohoo! <laughs> you so just excited. got the job, Charlotte. That's awesome. So that's exactly to the point we were making. That must have resonated with you. That's so awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Charlotte. We love hearing that. Now, hopefully that's encouraging to everybody else. I'm going to see if I can. There we go. I just put that into all panelists and attendees, just so you, uh, you can see uh, what Charlotte sent in. Charlotte, congratulations on that. I hope we're connected on LinkedIn, Charlotte. If we're not, uh, please make sure we connect because I want to stay connected with you. Question that just came through, and I want to give some insight here about this. It says, a concern is that I feel like most of our customers or prospects typically aren't talking about the types of services that we provide them. All right. I'm going to answer this in two ways. Number one is 
when you say, I feel like, I want to know, have you researched that? And the reason being is we, Dave knows this customer that we were talking about that, that we're working with, they were very, very certain that their prospects were not on LinkedIn because of the type of products and services they were. And they said, our customers, they didn't even say, I feel like they literally said our customers are not there. And we said, okay, if that's true, that's fine. But let's just actually test that thesis. And we actually uncovered the opposite. So number one, anytime you're, you feel like something or you're not sure, I'd encourage you to go test it and make sure because you may be wrong and your customers might actually be asking for those things or you may be right and that's fine, but you'd like to at least know either way. The second thing is, and I think this is really important. If there isn't a party started, you start the party. So what I mean by that is go on LinkedIn, go on Clubhouse, go on Facebook, go on all these places in this con the context of this conversation, go on LinkedIn and start to create a group for the types of products and services that you provide. Now, not in terms of here's the product and service, talk about the output. Right, create a group of you know whatever it is that people are looking for. That oh, by the way, are the products and services that you offer, right? So bring those people together, and again, don't pitch there. Start to bring value. Talk about why this is important. How does this impact their business? How does Mackenzie? This I can share an example of that. Is that is. helpful? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the the idea of you know throwing the party or hosting the party is one that, that we employ here um, at Mindfire as well. Let me just show you a quick example. Some of you might be familiar with this. Can you see the screen, everybody? Uh, drop a one in the chat if you can see LinkedIn. That's pretty yep. meta. We're seeing ourselves there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but here's this post. Drop a one in the chat, everybody. Cameron, everybody else in LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, wherever you are. Uh, you may be familiar with this publication. Every Friday, we publish this uh, list of the top people in print, right, who are on LinkedIn. And this is part of that strategy that you just mentioned, Mackenzie. It's like creating a group, uh, but it's creating a community of potential customers, partners, vendors, et cetera, that are brought together through by you, right? You become the one throwing the party. And what this is, and feel free to take this idea, folks. I want you to uh, see if this has applicability to your business. What this is, this is a weekly rank order list of the top five people in a couple of key categories, and we bring attention to them. These are people in the print and marketing space. These are folks from a variety of different organizations. You can see like in Focus, Xerox, um, the best postcards, uh, even the CEO of LinkedIn is on the list. And these are people that we bring together every week through this, this uh, format to engage them in conversation and bring them together uh, in this party. So that's one little example, Mackenzie, hopefully that's helpful for somebody who thinks, uh, hmm, how would I do that? How do I apply that to my business? There's one little tidbit for you. Love it. That's all the questions that I have. Are there any other questions out there that I may have missed or that you haven't yet asked? We're here for you. So we're ready to answer. Yeah, I see a I see one here that came in uh, during the sign up. How do I get LinkedIn readers and specific groups to look at my articles? LinkedIn groups seem overwhelmed with spam these days. That's that's you know LinkedIn groups are not great. Um, I know that they're going to be working on LinkedIn groups, and they're always uh, hearing that from us uh, LinkedIn practitioners. The groups kind of suck, but it's really up to the group owner to kind of set the the tone and the. Um, to, to really drive the value in that group. So just going in and posting articles in a group is usually not that great a strategy, to be honest with you. Um, like you said, you're going to see a lot of spam. You're just going to see a lot of people posting their articles, doing that self-promotion. I would recommend that you think about starting conversations in those groups um, that perhaps then pique the interest of potential customers and, and others, give value give away your best in that group as opposed to putting a link to an article and saying, you know, come check out my cool article. Just my thought. Yeah. And if there's a group that you're a part of or that you see from afar and you're like, shoot, they're just really doing it well. LinkedIn is about community, right? Reach out to the person who's the host of that, that group, right? Ask them, Hey, I love your group. You've been able to foster a community where people are not just pitching, but they're actually having, how are you able to do that? It seems like such a far out idea, but shoot, if you see someone doing a good job, just ask them. 9.9 .9 times out of 10, people want, I mean, first of all, it feels good, right? You just reached out, you complimented their group. You say, I've been a part of a bunch of groups and I feel like it's just a sales pitch. Yours is actually really awesome. That person feels good. How did you do that? 
most people are going to offer insight and actually walk you through that, right? It feels good to help other people when you've been able to win. When you win, more people win, right? So yeah. I would I would suggest you doing that. One other example of being a producer, <laughs> just a real life example. I can see Mackenzie oh smiling gosh. already, right? I see her her reaction. I just happened to go back to my LinkedIn homepage and this was, was it the first one? Yeah, the first uh, piece of content that popped up. I do happen to be connected to Lorena. So um, that that's an advantage I have. But look, when you see something like this, let me get my little pen here. First of all, if you saw McKenzie's face a second ago, you know that it did something to her, right? Probably did something to you too. I don't even know what this is about. But as a producer, I see something strange here. It catches my eye. And I look at 108 reactions, 18 comments, and 1,300 views. And that gives me a clue. Something about this piece of content, something about this meme or whatever it is, is catching attention. How could you use this video? How could you use this meme and make it applicable or somehow to draw attention to your business? You see what I'm saying? As a consumer, you might look at that chuckle, like, and just keep scrolling. As a producer, you stop. Maybe you take a snapshot on your phone and you put it in a swipe file, or you take a snapshot on your desktop and you put it in a swipe file and you think, self, how do I use this for our business? It's obviously getting attention. It stands out in the newsfeed. What can I do with that? All right, I'll shut up. What's next, Mackenzie? Those are all the questions I've got. Okay. So let's see, Mark is here, Adam, Alan, Alec, Alexis. I'm gonna call you out, Dave T, David S, Derek E. What are the questions you have, folks? Thomas, Ted, Paul, Steve, have you gotten value out of today's session? Please let us know in the chat. Give us a yes. Give us some X's, some O's, something there in the chat so that we know if you've received value. I see Adam saying yes. I want to see LinkedIn. I want to see Facebook. Are you getting value out of this? Cameron says yes. Alexis says yes. What else can we do to help? Alexis, Cameron, Adam, Charlotte, anything else we can do for you? Steve, I see Steve is here. Tall, I know you're here. Ted is here. Thomas is here, uh, Irum, hopefully I pronounced that right. Jim is here. What else can we do for you folks? Uh, we wanna provide you value if there's anything else you wanna know. Mackenzie, why don't you drop that link one more time there in the chat if you wanna talk one-on-one. -on -one. Same with you, Suzanne and Mike over wherever you are. Drop a one or drop that link, I should say in the chat and we'll, uh, we'll schedule some time with you. Feel free to do that. If there isn't anything else, I'll pause for a second here, see if anything else comes in. Uh, Mackenzie, I will give you the uh, closing. I was just going to say, today I was going to give you the closing. <laughs> oh, you were going to give me the honor? I'll give it to you, Mackenzie. <laughs> oh, <Jimmy. laughs> just kidding. I was actually just right before this looking at the link and it said, you know, mindfiremarketing.com slash yes. And this sounds really cheesy, but yeah. I love the fact that it has yes in the URL, because when you take a step to doing something for you and your business, you're saying yes to you. Yes to your future. Yes to your growth. Yes to your sales team. Yes to putting things in place where you are committing to taking actions towards creating the future that you want. So with that, I'm going to just ask you, what are you saying yes to and how is that contributing to your growth? Thank you so much for spending two hours almost with us today on this Friday morning for us, maybe afternoon for you. We really appreciate it. We bring these sessions to you because we want to bring you value. So if there's ever any things that you want to learn, topics you want us to cover, you can find us on all the channels, all the socials, um, on email, and we would love to bring that to you. So thank you so much for spending time with us. We hope you got value out of it and have an awesome Friday and weekend. All right, everyone.